Hi, I'm Holly and I've been working with Appetite and Newcastle Bid to bring you the hat story of Newcastle Underline. So I've been asking people to send in photos and memories of Newcastle under Lime and a thank you to everybody so far that sent stuff in. Uh, I think people also discovered that their family didn't wear any hats, which uh, we're all making discoveries together. So although I've already decided what hat styles I'm going to do, you can still send all of this stuff in throughout the entirety of the project and I will discuss all of this stuff later on and read out some stories during the live stream. Some lovely people from uh, Brampton Museum and Art Gallery have sent me in some absolutely incredible photos that I'm going to show you. And before I get into what kind of hat styles I'm going to make, and the photos that have inspired them. I just want to show you these really cool hat shops. Um, so there's this one, which is Turner's Hat Stores, a hat shop from 1892 that was on the corner of Fry Street in Newcastle. And look at that massive hat outside. How cool is that? And this one here is Miss Hickman's and she sold women's hats in 1910. And then I think she rebranded possibly because she got married. Um, and this became Mrs. Jones in 1920. And this was situated on Drayton Street in Newcastle. So for this project, I'm going to be making two hats that are inspired by photos that are sent to me of people wearing hats throughout the history of Newcastle under Lyme. And I wanted to uh, create some hats that I wouldn't normally have the opportunity to make. You know, things that are uh, different from the styles that we wear now and also have a lot of character. So what has more character than a town crier? This is Frank Shufflebotham. Frank Shufflebotham was a town crier from Newcastle under Lyme and this was taken in 1979. How cool is that hat? That is a tricorn hat. A town crier is somebody that is hired by the town council to make announcements in the street. So they would shout all of the things that were going on and people would listen because this is just how they got their news. They would also often dress very elaborately, uh, very fancy. They would wear red and gold robes, white breeches, big black boots. And especially my favorite part is the tricorn hat. And the tricon hat is the first hat that I am going to be making. Brampton Museum also sent me some photos of women's wedding hats from Newcastle under Lyme in the 1920s. And I fell in love with these. They are so big, so over the top with lots of embellishments, veils, and I love it. This image is of a wedding party from the 1920s. So for my second hat, I'm going to be drawing inspiration from a couple of these on here. These really big wide brimmed hats. Uh, I really like this one at the top here, which I assume is the mother of the bride or the groom. Uh, so I'm going to be taking some inspiration from that. Probably like I wanted to do a veil and use some kind of mesh and tool material. Uh, and then I really wanted to mix that veil with the wide brims and large kind of feathery and floral embellishments that you find in some of these hats lower down, especially this one on the right. I really like how big and wide the brim is. Step one. First thing you need when you're making a hat is your material for the hat. I use wool felt, but you can also get fur felt materials, and these are called hat bodies. Uh, I buy mine in a cape line shape, which is this shape. Uh, but you can also get them in a hood shape, uh, which is just the same, but it comes to like here, so it's a lot smaller, and it's mainly used for like fascinators and millinery. So the way felt is made is um, you pull felt, and this is called carding, uh, you pull felt with a brush into little pieces and you layer it flat, um, kind of weaved over each other, so in different directions. And then when you've got a big pile, you get soap and water and you rub it. You usually put mesh over the top and you keep rubbing it until all of the wool has kind of matted together uh, and it's quite dense. And then you will roll this in bamboo to get all the water out and then you'll have a piece of felt material 
Now that would give you a flat piece of material, but for hat making, that's very difficult to shape. So when people are manufacturing felt for the purpose of uh, making hats, they actually do it on a kind of cone shaped block, uh, which gives us this shape and it's a lot easier to shape. So in Newcastle, felt makers would uh, do this by hand until I think it was the early 19th century when machinery started to be introduced. Um, these would be carding machines and blowing machines which would separate uh, the coarse and fine wool. The blowing machine was actually an invention by James Astley Hall who was from Newcastle under Lyme and was actually one of the main hat manufacturers from the town. So when you get these felts, uh, they are quite soft and I want my hat at the end to be able to hold its shape and be quite stiff. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stiffen it and I like to use a chemical stiffener from Parkin Fabrics. Uh, I'm not too sure what people would use um, in the 17th and 18th century in Newcastle. I would assume that it would be shellac flakes and denatured alcohol that you can mix together and spray into the felt. I could be wrong and if anybody knows please let me know. I am going to mix my stiffener with some of this Bob Ross odorless thinner. It's odorless so that it doesn't leave any nasty smells in the hat after and the reason I use a thinner is just to kind of break the stiffener apart a little bit so that it's easier to kind of work in. Um, I'm going to mix these together in a bowl. I'm going to use a paintbrush to uh, just dab this on in small amounts and then I work it in with a brush, which you can just kind of use a shoe brush. This is a tiling brush. Uh, I'm going to wear my protective gloves because the chemical can be harsh on the fingers. I don't think it would burn, uh, but it's not really good to have on your skin. And I'm also going to wear this mask to protect my lungs because it's a little bit toxic. It has child lock on it. one side to dry now and for the 1920s wedding style hat uh, I want a really big brim for it so I'm going to use a lot of stiffener and I'm going to use a bigger piece of felt. Uh, the last one was 120 grams this one is 250 gram felt cape line. <laughs> Uh, I have never used one this big before, <laughs> so this is new for me, bear with me. Um, but I'm just going to go through the same process, um, I'm going to brush my stiffener on and then I'm going to rub it in with a brush. So I'm now done with stiffening these and I'm going to leave them to dry overnight and I think I've saturated them enough but if I haven't then I'll check tomorrow and I can always add more stiffener in. Uh, the next stage is to shape them into the styles that I want uh, which I'll do on blocks and you can watch how I do this next week uh, same time Wednesday at 11 o'clock. Thanks for watching. <laughs>